So I hear a lot of people complaining about team politics these days. You know, the thing where people are more loyal to a party or a personality than they are to ideas or principles. This isn't politics born out of principle, everybody. It's politics born out of knee-jerk opposition. Like, oh, the opponent did this, well, we must do this. The opponent said that, well, we disagree. That's why I don't believe in this left and right thing. It's like the Raiders versus the Dolphins. You pick a team and your team can do no wrong. And now it's the liberals' turn to oppose things uh, just because Trump supports them or support things just because Trump opposes them. But that's not even approaching rational. That's basically saying, I refuse to think about these issues in a mature and reasonable way. I just want to play for a team. The reason I don't call myself a liberal, a conservative, a centrist, or anything else is because I care about substance. And I find that with the average person whose brain has been marinating in politics for too long, the argument always falls back to the label as opposed to the actual issue we're supposed to be talking about. I just want to pick a side in this big, distracting fucking culture war. I want to be divided against my fellow man. And if my enemy starts to agree with me on something, I'll change my position rather than allow myself to have common ground with him. That's disgusting, everybody. That's fucking contemptible. And it's everywhere. There's a large contingent that's going to resist that in a major way because, it, again, it has become such team sport. It has become, well, if you say something bad about Trump, then you're a cuck and you're, and you're undermining him. What they say is certainly true and, in the macro, undeniably destructive. Take, for example, when Barack Obama pardoned Chelsea Manning. You had people on the right who had applauded WikiLeaks for releasing Clinton campaign emails during the election, all of a sudden calling Obama a traitor for commuting the sentence of WikiLeaks' primary informant. Likewise, we saw many Democrats and liberals, who had bitched endlessly about WikiLeaks during the campaign, praise the president for courageously exonerating the whistleblower. I have no doubt that if you changed one of the key variables in this equation, like, say, putting an R next to Obama's name instead of a D, you would have seen radically different behavior from most of these people. So rather than engaging in an intelligent debate driven by principles, we have, for all intents and purposes, another football game between the blue team and the red team. So the people who complain about team politics are correct in their observations. But here is where I part company with them. But that's not even approaching rational. That's exactly wrong. This behavior is entirely rational. Given that most people spend most of their time surrounded by others who are similar to them, both superficially and ideologically, there's no good reason to become an informed citizen who votes based on issues. To quote The Economist George Akerlof, Information is interpreted in a biased way which weighs two goals. Agents desire to feel good about themselves, their activities, and the society they live in on the one hand, and the need for an accurate view of the world for correct decision making on the other hand. Because any individual's influence on the public choice outcome is close to zero, each individual has an incentive to choose a model of the world which maximizes his private happiness without any consideration of the consequences for social policy. You could spend a lot of time studying up on the issues, poring over data, and reading up on what experts think in order to form an original opinion, but you stand to gain nothing from doing so. Even if you figure out that your life would be better under the policies of candidate A over candidate B, your vote is not going to change the outcome of that election. Meanwhile, you run the risk of seriously damaging your relationships with your friends and family. On the other hand, you could save your time, spare yourself bitter and vicious arguments with your peers, and get along with people within your community, which has a much more immediate impact on your well-being. People have every incentive to do the latter. While it may be in the best interests of the nation as a whole that voters be informed, the exact opposite is true on the individual level. This is called rational ignorance. You could very well agree with the argument I've made and still maintain that we need to fight this impulse. But I don't agree. Destructive though the impulse may be, I don't think it's realistic for people to go against their rational self-interest in this way. Most people would rather go along to get along, and I don't hold that against them. And even if we did fight it, I doubt it would ever be overcome. I believe we should take this approach to politics. Rather than have our democratic institutions depend upon an electorate that keeps up with the issues, and complain when voters refuse to do so, we need to assume that the electorate will continue to be ignorant and build our institutions in accordance with that assumption. In other words, we need to make politics matter less.